家好，欢迎大家来我们的中文研讨会。Awesome. So thank you, everybody, for joining us. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. So our webinar for today is about traveling in China. My name is Anais. My Chinese name is Feng Xinmei, and myself and Echo 老师 my wonderful colleague, we're with the Chinese Language Institute, or CLI. So today we're going to have about a one-hour workshop for you, where you're going to learn a little bit about Chinese geography and some facts about the best travel destinations in China. Then Echo Lao Shi is going to teach you some really useful vocabulary that you'll need to know when you travel throughout China.、Uh, she'll also teach you some general useful expressions that can help you make new friends while in China. And then I'll come back in and I'll talk to you a little bit more about how you can continue learning Chinese with CLI. So just a little bit more about us and who we are before I hand things over to Echo Lao Shi. Uh, CLI is a center for Chinese language and cultural studies. We actually have a center in Guangxi, Guilin. It's a very beautiful city in southern China, where Echo lives, where I've lived for the past several years. So one day we would love to welcome you to study Mandarin with us at our school in Guilin.、Uh, and in the meantime, we also offer many online class options. So at the end, I'll come back and tell you a little bit more about that. So that's who we are. Uh, again, thank you for joining us. I'm going to hand things over to Echo Lao Shi, and I'll see you again at the end. 好的，啊、uh, ，大家好，我的英文名字是 Echo， 我的中文名字是詹雪宁。欢迎大家来到我们的中文研讨会。今天，呃、uh, ，我们要说一说怎么在中国旅游。Uh, I'm not very sure about your Chinese levels, so I'm going to use both English and Chinese. And、uh, if you have any questions, you can type your、uh, questions in the WeChat、uh, in the chat window, and I will answer questions if、uh, there are any. Okay. So now I'm going to、uh, share my screen with you guys. Okay. So,、um, let's start with the map of China. Okay. So,、um, this is、uh, the map of China. It looks like a huge rooster. So this part is the head. And this part is the belly, and this part is the tail.、Um, so, how big is China? Here are the numbers. First of all, China is very big. Okay, so、um, the it's nine hundred sixty-one square kilometers. So nine point six million square kilometers, 九百六十万平方公里 And there are four different kinds of、um, parts in China. So there are twenty-two 省二十二个省呃五个自治区四个直辖市和两个特别行政区。So the 特别行政区 special administrative regions are, I think you know, is Hong Kong and、uh, Macau, 香港和澳门。Okay, and there are over sixty hundred cities, 六百座城市 ，and fifty five. Uh, uh, world heritage sites. Basically, China is very big. There are many interesting places. Okay. Now,、uh, I'm going to show you some questions first. China's capital is where? 
Who knows? You can answer me. 中国的首都在哪里 ？Okay, 在北京 ，of course. I think most people know Beijing. And then, 中国的人口是多少 ？How many people are there in China? 中国的人口是多少 ？It's a huge number. Okay, so I'll show you later. And then. 中国有哪些名胜古迹 ？So, 名胜古迹 is a Chinese idiom. It means the famous landmark marks. Okay. So, now give you guys the answer. First, 首都在北京 ，of course. 中国的人口是十四亿。So, 十四亿 one point four billion. So there are eight zeros after the fourteen. That's 十四亿 And the 名胜古迹 the famous landmarks. I'll show you some right now. Okay, first, of course, 天安门Ah,、uh, 天安门 Square is in Beijing. Uh, it's the signal of China. It's the,、um, I think this is the biggest square in,、uh, in the world. Okay, Tiananmen, and then Gu Gong, the Forbidden City. Ah,、uh, it's the palace of Emperor in Qing Dynasty, Qing Chao. So this is Gu Gong. Okay, and then, ah.、Uh, Next one, Changcheng. Of course, I think this is the most famous landmarks、uh, for like foreign people, right? Changcheng. Chang means long. Cheng means city. So Changcheng is like the long wall, the long、uh, kind of wall to protect the city. So Changcheng. Hu Tong is also in Beijing. Is the traditional Beijing、uh, architecture, Hu Tong. Okay, now Shanghai. Shanghai is the most modern city in China. You can see those beautiful buildings, and this is Wai Tan, the Bund. Wai Tan,、uh, a lot of tall buildings there. Yu Yuan. Okay, so Yu Yuan、uh, is a very typical classic garden in Chinese style. You can see these buildings; it's very Chinese, right? Yu Yuan is in Shanghai, and、uh, it has、uh, it has been built for like, it it has been built、uh, in four hundred years before. Yu Yuan, and now Su. Hangzhou and、uh, Suzhou,、uh, another two famous cities, which is not very far from Shanghai. There's a saying in China. We say, "Shang you Tian Tang, Xia you Su Hang,"、uh, which is means above, above there's heaven, and below are Suzhou and Hangzhou. It's just as beautiful as heaven. So, Hangzhou, Suzhou. Okay. Xi'an、uh, is the former like, ancient capital city in China, and it's also the first capital、uh, for Chinese Emperor Qin Dynasty. All of the three, all of the four、uh, places are very、uh, very famous. So, first one, Bing Ma Yong, Bing Soldier Ma Horse, Yong Warriors. So. Terracotta warriors and、uh, ancient city wall, Wu Chengqiang. This city walls、uh, is just around the old city of Xi'an.、Uh, it's very different from the Great Wall, but it's older. Okay, Wild Goose Pagoda, Da Yan Ta. Da Yan Ta is、uh, is also very long, thousand years, and the most important. Uh, there are a lot of interesting、uh, 
things, different culture, uh, delicious food, uh, and Muslim temples, very in uh, different and interesting. So this is Xi'an. Here you go. I think you guys are familiar with those views. Uh, a famous movie, Avatar. Avatar. Uh, I think it's shoot here for several scenes at, at least. Uh, it's very beautiful. There are a lot of abundant hiking trails, so you can spend like one week there, just enjoy the lush greenery and the hiking there. Zhang Jiajie is in Hunan province. Hunan is in uh, southern China. Yeah. Here, Chengdu. Chengdu is famous for the pandas. Xiong Mao. Xiong Mao is panda. So, and another famous thing is Guo Guo. Guo Guo is hot pot. So it's spicy. Uh, the spicy cuisines, they are very famous. And hot pot, panda, drink some tea, and they listen to some uh, uh, Buddhism stories. And then you can hang out there for months, I think, even years, if you enjoy that relaxed atmosphere there. It's a very uh, relaxed city. Chengdu is in Sichuan province. Okay, here, Guilin, here we go. I am in Guilin right now, and uh, I just uh, saw the beautiful sunset several hours before. So, uh, Guilin is famous uh, for the Karst Mountains, and uh, it's also a very famous uh, traveling city in China. There's another city, Guilin Shan Shui Jia Tian Xia. Guilin Shan Shui Jia Tian Xia means the mountains and the rivers in Guilin are the best in the world, <laughs> at least in China. So you can see the beautiful mountains and water in this picture, right? The Lui River is uh, very beautiful. And they, uh, if you heard, uh, have ever heard about Yangshuo before, it's another town which is not very far from Guilin. Their mountains are very beautiful. Okay, and the dragon's backbone rice terrace, Longji Ti Tian. The most important thing is the home of CLI. We're based in Guilin, uh, and uh, we have been here for 11 years almost. So this is Guilin. So hope you, all you guys have a chance to come to visit. Uh, Guilin is in Guangxi. Uh, Guangxi is one of the Zizhi Chu is one of the five uh, autonomous regions. Okay, and uh, introduce you guys another four huge cities. Guangzhou. Guangzhou is not very far from Hong Kong, so in southern China, uh, it's very close to Hong Kong, Macau. Uh, so it's uh, the bustling, uh, bustling trade center. There are a lot of fairs, but not this year, you know. But then Shenzhen. Shenzhen is a total new city. It's very new. Uh, it started to develop in 1980, I think. But now it's one of the biggest and the most modern city in China. Shenzhen. Uh, from Shenzhen to Guangzhou, it only takes you half hour, I think. And then Tianjin, uh, northeastern port city. Uh, it's very close to Beijing. By bullet train, I think it will take you 40, 45 minutes. And then Chongqing. Chongqing is a very uh, special city. Uh, it's in middle of China, actually. And it's surrounded by a lot of mountains. The transportation is not that convenient but there are a lot of people and uh, it's uh, a lot of resources there. So it's Chongqing. Okay. And some natural destinations for travelers. Jiu Zhai Go is in Sichuan. Uh, we just uh, introduced Chengdu, right? Chengdu is also in Sichuan. Uh, Jiu Zhai Go is not very far from there. It's very beautiful. It's a national park. Li Jiang. 
uh, ancient village in Yunnan, uh, there are a lot of minorities. There are uh, 55 minorities in China, right? So a lot of minorities and different cultures there in Yunnan province. And Huangshan, Yellow Mountain in Anhui. Anhui is uh, not very far. It's a province in the East China. So uh, the Huangshan is uh, one of the most mountain in China. It's huge. The Danxia, uh, this is in Gansu province. Gansu is in uh, west, uh, Northwest, Northwest China. So uh, there are not pretty dry, uh, and you can see the Danxia mountains there. Yeah, it's like rainbow. Okay, so basically those are the destinations you should go, the cities, uh, the parks, uh, but if you want to go to those places, you need to learn some basic Chinese to make your traveling easier, right? So let's get started. First, um, the bullet train, Gao Tie, I think, up to now is the most convenient transportation in China. Uh, it's fast, uh, it's convenient, it's cheaper, so, and uh, the service on the bullet train is pretty good. It's clean uh, and uh, quiet, very fast. Okay, so high speed rail and trains are, like, are developing very fast in China. Yeah, so we call it Gao Tie, bullet train, Gao Tie. Of course, there are also some other like normal speed, I mean, slower speed, Huo Che, just uh, normal trains. We call them Huo Che. Uh, I give you a, a speed comparison. If you uh, go to Beijing by bullet train, I mean, from Guilin to Beijing by bullet train, it will take you eight to nine hours, like eight, 30, eight hours and 30 minutes, something like that. But if you take the Huo Che, the train, normal train, it will take you, um, let's say, 25 hours. So it's almost three times the speed. The time difference is very big. So Gao Tian Huo Che, the train station is Huo Che Zhan. Huo Che Zhan, train station. Uh, no matter the bullet train or the normal train, uh, all of them are uh, called Huo Che Zhan. For the bullet train, there are three different types of tickets. So business class, first class, and second class. Uh, business class is the most expensive uh, ticket. I think the price is just as same as the uh, airplane ticket or even more expensive maybe. But it's very comfortable. You can lie down to take a nap, or work there, there's 4G all covered. And the yi deng zuo is still, you will have a very comfortable chair, even though you cannot lie down, but for a like, for, uh, less than five hours traveling, it's still acceptable. And the er deng zuo, er deng zuo is just a normal, generally people take er deng zuo because it's already good enough for short-term traveling like less, around three hours, yeah. So let's read those words again. Gao tie, bullet train. Gao tie, huo che, train. Huo che, zhan, station, zhan. And then huo che zhan, train station. Shang wu cang. Shang Wu Cang Business Class Yi Deng Zuo First Class Yi Deng Zuo And then Er Deng Zuo Second Class Er Deng Zuo Okay um, Highlight Bullet Train is the most uh, I think I like it most uh, It's my favorite 
travel uh, transportation like that. Okay, next one. If you come to China, the most important thing is your hu zhao, right? Passport, hu zhao. And you cannot get a train ticket if you don't have your passport. So it's very important. Hu zhao and piao ticket. So how to say train ticket? So train is huo te, piao ticket. So huo te piao is train ticket. Then chuang kou ticket counter. Um, before the ticket counters are very busy in China. Uh, but now there are not many people because we always buy the train tickets on application on our smartphone. Okay. And the dan cheng is one way. Wang fan is wrong trip. So dan cheng piao is a ticket for one way. Wang fan piao is a ticket for wrong trip. Okay. Now let's learn a full sentence. I want to buy a ticket. So, 我 is I. 要 is what. 买 is to buy. I want to buy. 一张票. 一 is one. 票 is ticket. But what is the 张 for? Okay, so 张 is a measure word in Chinese. We always put it uh, between the number and the noun. It's a special existence in China, in Chinese. So, 我要买一张票. I want to buy a ticket. 我要买一张票. And then you need to tell your destination, right? <clears throat> so you can say, 我要买一张票. 从桂林到北京. From Guilin to Beijing. So, from Guilin to Beijing. Got it? Now, let's talk about airplane. Of course, if you, the uh, distance is pretty long, it's kind of a long-term journey. Uh, airplane is the most comfortable uh, transport method, I think. So, Feiji is airplane. 坐飞机 is take, take a flight. 坐飞机, 坐 means sit. So, 坐飞机. And then, 飞机场, airport. 场 means field. So, 飞机场. Okay, and next one is uh, 机票, flight ticket. See, 票 again, right? So, 票. Uh, 机 means 飞机, 机票 is airplane ticket, flight ticket. Okay, and 航班, flight. 航班 is flight. You can say 我的航班, my flight is CZ2244 and then give a number. 航班, and then 航空公司, airline. 公司 is company. So the company for flights, Hong Kong Gongsi. Um, most of, I think at least half of cities in China um, has have a Fei Ji Chang airport. So it's convenient uh, to travel by airport too. Um, but generally the Fei Ji Chang airport is kind of far from city, from downtown. So that's why I don't think it's like as same as uh, as convenient as the Gao Tie, the bullet train. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next one. Ooh, a lot of details about airports. Uh, because for international traveling, airports is kind of the only choice, right? So, Dan Ji Pai, boarding pass. 登机牌, 转机, transfer, 转机, transfer. Those keywords are kind of important, so you can write them down if you have a notebook. Um, and then, 登机口, departure gate. 登机口, and you can write down the pinyin too to help you pronounce it. 靠走廊, 
靠走廊 in the seat which is close to the asshole. 靠走廊 and then 靠窗座位靠窗 so window seat. The win、uh, the seat which is close to the window. 靠窗 and then 海关 customs. 海关海 is ocean. 海关 means border close. So 海关 custom. Okay, do you got those words? Let's continue. Okay, so if you arrived a tiny city and you want to start to see the city, you need some、um, public transportation like first, 公共汽车 is bus. 公共汽车 it's kind of long, right? And the pron、uh, pronunciation is not easy. So let's learn an easier. 公交车，公共汽车 and 公交车 the same. So 公共汽车 or 公交车 But most of、uh, big cities in China have 地铁 subway, 地铁 okay, and 线 lines. Uh, there are many lines of subway in like Beijing, Shanghai, Guangzhou, in those huge cities. So, 地铁线 like 一号线二号线 number one, uh, line number one, line number two, those. Okay. So, and then, uh, you can ask if I want to go to the uh Yu Garden in Shanghai, which line should I take? So you can say, 要坐几号线？要坐几号线 ？Which line is that? 要 is need. 坐 is to take. 要坐几号线 ？Or 要坐几路车？啊、uh, ，Which uh number? Which number of bus should I take? And 要坐几站 ？How many stops? Stops should I go? 要坐几站 ？But now the、uh, Google Map or the、uh, in China you can use Baidu Map. It's very convenient.、Uh, it will tell you all the details, which number you should take and how many stops you should、uh, go, like this of stuff. So if you come to China for traveling, you'd better download some very、uh, convenient and necessary applications here. For traveling, the map is necessary. Electronic map. Okay. Taxi, 出租车啊、uh, Generally, uh, people use 滴滴打车滴滴 is kind of Chi、uh, a Uber in China. So we use 滴滴、uh, Name is very cute. So you can、uh, get a taxi through 滴滴 But you need to tell them where do you want to go, right? If the driver asks you. 去哪里 Where are you going? 去哪里 And you need to answer. 我要去 I'm going to. 我要去 Ah,、uh, and then your destination's name. Like 我要去兵马俑 The terracotta warriors. 我要去兵马俑 And then 下车 Like 我要在这里下车 ，I'll get out here. 我要在这里下车 ，I want at this place get out. 我要在这里下车，下车 is get out, and get on is 上车 is here. 上车，下车，去哪里？我要去。我要在这里下车。These are several basic sentences you need to learn if you want to take taxi. And the、uh, application for get taxi is 滴滴滴滴打车。Okay. And then, ah,、uh, of course, ah,、uh, there are some other modes of transport. Hmm, like. 骑自行车，骑自行车。Anybody knows the meaning? Anybody knows? 骑自行车 means, ah,、uh, 
ride a bicycle. And then, 坐船, 坐船, 船 is boat, right? So by boat. 骑马, I think uh, somebody knows the meaning of 马. 马 is horse. So 骑马, red horse. And then 骑摩托车, 骑摩托车. It's ride a motorcycle. Mo tuo is a motor. I think this is from the English sound. Qi mo tuo chu. And then qi dian dong chu. I'm not sure if you guys know what dian dong chu is. The dian dong chu is scooter. Uh, it's generally the size is smaller than the mo tuo chu motorcycle. And uh, it's the power is electricity, not gas, not oil. Okay, and then, 开车, driving car, 开车, but it's kind of impossible to 开车, drive a car in China during your traveling because you need a license here, and it's not easy to get a license. So, 开车, and the last one, but the most natural one, 走路, 走路, by walking. So if you go to a natural place like Zhangjiajie, Huangshan, Jiujiaigou, those natural places, not the huge cities. Okay? So you, can, you always can. So, Lu. So, Lu. Okay, now let's review all of those modes of uh, transport. First, Qi Zi Xing Chu. 骑自行车，坐船，坐船，骑马，骑马，骑摩托车，骑摩托车，骑电动车，骑电动车，开车。开车，走路，走路。Do you get it? Okay, next page. Okay, now you know the transportations, the keywords of those transportations, and you need to learn some useful expressions to buy stuff, to order food, to pay bill, those kind of stuff. Okay. Let's start. First, if uh, you travel in China, definitely you will buy some souvenirs, right? Because souvenirs in China are so different and they could be a good gift to your friends, relatives. So, if you want to buy, you can say, yeah, I want. Uh, you can just say 我要 and then point that thing, right? So 我要 and then point, point to the thing you want and then people understand you. 我要 我要 and then this one 这个 now you have a sentence I want this one 我要这个 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 Okay, and then if you go to a restaurant after you finish your delicious Chinese food you need to pay the bill so you can say 买单 you just uh, say to the waiter or waitress say 买单 or 你好 买单 你好 is hello so 你好 买单 hello I want to pay the bill 你好,买单 Okay And you want to, if you want to ask the price uh, How much? You can say, may I ask how much? So, 请问多少钱? 请问多少钱? May I ask how much? 请问多少钱? Okay, so now we have three sentences First, 
I want this one. So you can say, 我要这个. 我要这个. Okay. And the second one, if you want to say, Hello, pay, I want to pay the bill. You can say, 你好,买单. 你好,买单. And the third sentence, you want to say, Excuse me, how much is it? You can say, 请问多少钱? 请问多少钱? Okay, and here is a uh, important word. If you want to call attention from the waiter or waitress, you can say, 服务员, it means waiter or waitress. 服务员. So you can say, hey, waiter, I want to pay uh, the bill. You can say, 你好,服务员,买单. 你好,服务员,买单. Okay, here we go. 这个多少钱 for bargaining? It's very important in China to bargaining, right? Uh, because especially for the souvenirs, people just ask for a way high price. It's generally, of course, you can bargain about it. And uh, some people ask me, how much is suitable if I want to bargain? I'm not sure about that, but I'll say 50% is a good number. It means if somebody tell you like this date is 200 why you can ask for 100 it's okay it's not it's not rude in china if you bargain that's kind of a uh, chinese tradition for trade okay? but first of all you need to know how to bargain first you need to ask the price so you can say 这个多少钱? How much is this? 多少钱 is how much? And 这个, it means this. So, 这个多少钱? And then they will tell you 180块, 180块. I think you guys know the numbers in Chinese, right? If you don't know this, I suggest you take a class about basic, like, like survival Chinese basic numbers, otherwise it's very hard for China too. Of course, you can write. <laughs> you can write the numbers down, but it's better to say it out. Okay, so, 180块. Pay attention here. Your next sentence should be, that's too expensive. 太贵了. 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 Generally, uh, the person who is selling those stuff might give you a cheaper price after your first sentence, after your 太贵了. And if you still think it's, it's expensive or you just don't like it, you can say 我不要,谢谢. 我不要, is I don't want it. I don't want it, thank you. So, 我不要,谢谢. 我不要,谢谢. So got it? Three sentences. 这个多少钱? 这个多少钱? And then the number, 180块. 180块. 太贵了. 太贵了. 我不要,谢谢. 我不要. Okay, and uh, now several uh, very useful phrases you need to learn. First of all, 好久不见, 好久不见, long time no see. If you have some friends in China or you and your friends meet each other in China, you can use this phrase. It is short and it's very nice grading. So, 
好久不见。Can you follow me? 好久不见。好久不见。Okay, next one. 欢迎光临。You will hear this a lot in China, but of course you don't need to. Uh, speak it, but you have to understand it. It means, uh, welcome to come. Welcome, come to this place. So, 欢迎光临 You go to a restaurant, a store, or some other places like um, a even museums, bookstores. Those places, you will say, 欢迎光临欢迎光临 Sometimes there's even a machine just hang on the door of the shop. They say in the robot voice, 欢迎光临欢迎光临 Okay. And if you want to make a Chinese friend, you need to introduce yourself, right? So you need to. Oh, at least you can say. I'm Ben. This is my name, and I'm American,、um, or I'm Germany, I'm British. So you can say, 我是 and then your country, I'm Yuan. Like I'm Chinese, you can say, 我是中国人我是中国人 or American, you can say, 我是美国人我是美国人 ，so you can introduce yourself. 你好 ，hello， 你好，我叫 ，I am called or my name is. 你好，我叫 Ben， 我是美国人。or 你好，我叫 Echo， 我是中国人。One more example. 你好，我叫 Wilson， 我是英国人。You got it? The last time, okay? 你好，我叫 your name， 我是 your nationality， 人。You have to put a 人 at the end. It means people, person. Okay. If you also want to learn some Chinese during your traveling, you can learn this sentence. How do you say delicious in Chinese? How do you say blah blah in Chinese? It's very simple. You can say, put the English word first, and then 中文怎么说中文怎么说 Or you can just point this thing and ask how to. How to say it in Chinese, right? You can say, 这个中文怎么说？这个 is this, right? So, 这个中文怎么说？这个中文怎么说 ？Okay. And in China, WeChat is the most popular application in China. Ah,、uh, if you want to make Chinese friend, suggest you download a WeChat application on your phone first, and then you can use it to know more Chinese and to travel, have a like better traveling experience in China. A lot of like Chinese Chinese are very friendly, so a lot of Chinese might want to add you WeChat. So, or if you want to add other WeChat, you can ask. 可以加你的微信吗？可以加你的微信吗？可以 is can， 加 is add， 你的 is your， 微信 is WeChat， 微信 ，and 吗 just the question mark。Okay， I'll say it again。可以加你的微信吗？可以。加你的微信吗 ？One more time. 可以加你的微信吗 
Okay, so I think everybody know how to speak it now. Okay, no matter how wonderful your trip will be, that will be the end. So, uh, how to say goodbye to your Chinese friend? And uh, generally, we say safe trip, have a pleasant journey. So, yi lu ping an. Yi lu ping an. Safe trip, have a pleasant journey. So, if you go to come to China, at least in several months, I will say yi lu ping an to you. And uh, when you're after your journey in China, after your traveling, you need to go back to your nationality, your, your nation, you can say, I also can say yi lu ping an to you. So always wish you a safe trip. Always wish you have a pleasant journey. So, yi lu ping an. Okay, so basically that's it. Mm. I don't know how much you have learned here, but I do wish you learned a lot. And I do wish you uh, have a wonderful journey if you travel in China one day. Okay, now I'll let my colleagues, Anayas, to uh, introduce you more about CLI and our tennis class. And uh, well, we will have some time to answer questions if there are any. Okay. Awesome. So we hope you all picked up some phrases and some useful vocabulary that you will definitely use when you do come travel in China. So uh, I actually have been living in China, as I mentioned, for the past almost four years now. Uh, time really flies. And I first began as a study abroad student in Shandong province, which is in northeastern China. Um, and really, it was during my solo travels in China the following summer, so when I was in university still, that I really fell in love with China. I went to a lot of cities, mostly on the east coast, so Shanghai, Beijing, Nanjing, Tianjin, a lot of the big cities in eastern China. and. Um, then after I had a chance to really travel around, I finally decided to move to Guilin, where our school is located. So this is actually a photo, uh, this background of downtown Guilin. So as you can see, it's really one of the most beautiful areas of China, we think. Um, so I would say that traveling in China is a must for anybody. And in order to travel in China, I think that learning a little bit of Chinese before you come is also going to make you help you have the best experience possible. Um, so today we learned a little bit of travel Chinese. Uh, I also want to chat with you a little bit more about other kind of Chinese language learning opportunities we have if you are interested. Uh, so we're really, so some of you have maybe heard of the HSK. The HSK is the main uh, official Chinese proficiency test for foreigners to take if you're interested in getting a job in China or some universities often require a certain HSK score, even if you're just kind of looking for a place to start your Chinese um, because you would like to travel here. I actually personally think the HSK is a really great place to start because it's really comprehensive and then you can take an actual exam um, and get that certificate. So if you're interested, uh, CLI offers small group HSK courses. So online classes with four other students, so five students total. Um, and depending on your HSK level, we have various schedules and program costs that are all outlined here. So they're kind of, these classes start on a rolling deadline. So as soon as we have five students enrolled, we'll, our class will begin. Um, and the class will come with uh, the tuition hour, the tuition listed here, as well as the schedule class hours listed here, as well as uh, access to one of our teachers in a WeChat group. So this is a really great way to study with other friends from around the world and kind of begin your HSK journey, which as I mentioned is really useful, I think for class, if you wanna to come to study uh, at a university in China or get a job in China. Uh, if you are interested in kind of having a more customized Chinese class experience, uh, we do offer one-on-one -on -one Chinese classes. Uh, so those are with our teachers who are located in Guilin, teachers like Echo Laoshi, 
uh, and that those are really customized courses. So whether or not you'd like to study HSK independently, or you'd like to study Chinese characters, or you'd like to work on your spoken Chinese and improve your tones, no matter your language background, uh, what your goals are for learning Chinese, our one-on-one -on -one classes are a really great way to customize your learning plan. So if you, uh, the more hours you purchase, obviously the more of a discounted rate you can get for these one-on-one -on -one classes. Um, so if you're interested in taking a free trial class to test us out, you can contact us at studycli.org slash contact and just let us know when you're available. Um, and again, these are online one-on-one -on -one classes are seven days a week. And if you'd like to study with a group of friends, also let us know. Uh, at this contact link here or on the China admissions website. There's a link to get in touch with them and enroll that way as well. Uh, and then you can also always learn more about us and our online classes on our website, studycli.org slash learn dash Chinese dash online. So that's all for our webinar today. Uh, again, it was a real pleasure meeting you all and we hope that you feel a little bit more confident coming to China now. We hope to be able to welcome you to China soon. So if you have any questions for myself or Echo Lao Shi, uh, please let us know in the chat box and we will do our best to answer any questions you might have. Otherwise, thank you so much for joining us and 再见. Thank you for coming. Thank you for attending this webinar. Oh. Yes, I agree. You must come to Guilin. I've been to many cities in China, and it's every time I go to another city, every time I return to Guilin, I think, wow, I really made the right choice. <laughs> this is the best place to live in China. <laughs> Guilin is great because there's students from all over the world. So if you want to make friends with a lot of other international people, there's a lot of universities in Guilin, so you can have access to that international community. Um, but at the same time, if you really want to immerse yourself and only hang out with Chinese friends and only speak Chinese 24 seven, you can completely avoid other foreigners as well in Guilin. Uh, so I think it's a perfect language environment and a really comfortable place to live. Is the weather harsh during winter? That's a good question. Uh, it's not, the temperatures don't drop very low. However, it can be a little bit, because of the moisture content, it can feel a little bit cold. So I would say the winters aren't harsh, but definitely bring a warm jacket. So I'll type uh, the details for our school. Yes. So we're located in Seven Star District uh, in Guilin City, very close to Guangxi Normal University. And so we have a five-story language learning center in Guilin, where we have two floors of classrooms and offices, and then three floors of living spaces. So if you come to visit us in Guilin to study Chinese with us, you could live at our school and take classes at our school. Um, it's a really convenient setup. Yeah, and you also can stay in a homestay if you want to like immerse deeper here. That's right. Uh, mm -hmm. I personally lived with a homestay family when I first came to China, and I actually still stay in touch with them uh, six years later, where we still talk on WeChat all the time. So I would definitely recommend staying with a homestay family in China one day if you can. Mm -hmm. yes. Cyber security in China. Cyber security? I think as, as Echo mentioned, really Shenzhen is where you're yeah. looking at if you want to do anything tech related. Um, Shanghai is also, is also quite technologically advanced and there's a lot of startups happening in both of those cities. So I would, I would look into Shenzhen or Shanghai for something related to tech. Mm -hmm. Yes, there's dormitories available at CLI. Uh, we have double and single occupancy private rooms that all have private bathrooms. Um, so that's in our learning center, we call the CLI center, where our classrooms are as well, where our offices are. Uh, we also have dormitories. So you can choose to live in our dormitories um, and they have private bathrooms, as I mentioned, some even have kitchens. You just let us know kind of what you'd like to do. Mm -hmm. There are uh, single rooms, but also double rooms. Okay. 
Any more questions? Oh, there's one more. I don't think this question is for us. We do, unfortunately uh, don't have no. a PhD program. <laughs> We're just a no. kind of like school. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, John Roger, actually we do partner with quite a few schools uh, outside of China. So middle schools, high schools, universities in the US. Actually, we've been doing that from the very beginning for the past 10 years. Uh, we lead what we call China seminars. So we'll work with faculty at schools outside of China to kind of design, implement, and then lead and facilitate a customized trip in China. So if you are interested in talking more about that, I can actually help you with that. Uh, and I'd love to chat more. So here's my email. Anais at studycli.org. So our tuition for online classes starts at 20 USD per class hour. Um, and then you can get uh, as low as 16 USD per class hour for online classes. And then our live in-person classes are part of our immersion program and it depends on how many weeks you stay with us. So let me share some links that you guys can look at right now. Just give me one second. Uh, and another student mentioned about the visa issue. Uh, yes, as long as the border <laughs> open again, uh, we can uh, provide all of uh, documents you need to apply for a visa. So generally you can apply for a X2 uh, student visa, which is for 180 days, half year. Yeah. And then uh, you can stand it at Guilin and then you will have another 180 days. Uh, so you can stay here for a year. That's okay, no problem. That's right. So this link that I just shared this kind of lists all details about our program in Guilin. So if you're able to come into China, uh, which we hope will be very soon, you can come uh, study with us through our immersion program. And so all of the program fees for that and housing options are listed here in this Chinese dash immersion link. And then all information, including pricing uh, regarding our one on one online classes is here at this learn dash Chinese dash online link. Yeah, we do provide uh, 15 days uh, classes. I think uh, we count our classes by week. So the shortest is one week and 15 days could be a uh, two week program. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have a lot of information on our website, including bios, biographies for all of our team members, uh, videos from former students, lots of pictures of Guilin, um, and pretty much all kind of information you'd need to know. Uh, and then also contact information is available on our website too. And I listed my email here in the chat, A-N-I-A-S at studycli.org. So if you have any specific questions, you can always feel free to email me as well. Yeah. Okay, if there's no more questions, uh, I think we can, I need to go. <laughs> yeah, because the time difference now is already 10 o'clock p.m. in China, in Guilin. Uh, so if you have any questions, please contact us, uh, contact us directly. Uh, and uh, wish you guys all have a wonderful evening or morning or noon. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Thank you so much, everybody. It's great to meet you all. We hope to see you again next time, and we hope to see you in Guilin very soon. Uh, goodbye.